through fifth grade, we are so pumped that you are here today. And guess what? Today is our first day of collection for the big give for Logan's Christmas shop. That's right, all month long, you and I and all of our Ascent Kids friends are gonna be joining together to bring in change and dollar bills to raise enough money for us to provide Christmas gifts for other kids who otherwise wouldn't get it. Can you imagine how awesome it would be if together we could help bring joy and fun to another kid's Christmas? I think it would be awesome. So it's the big give. Including today, we have five weeks to bring in our money so that we can collect and buy some Christmas toys for other kids. All right, friends. So. We're gonna move on to our big idea of courage, but don't forget about Logan's Christmas shop in the big give. All right, stand on up to your feet and let's worship together. Oh God, I know you're always near. In the dark I will not fear I know the storms will come I know I'm not alone You are my strength so I will say trying something brand new. I got something new. A bell. Nope, it's a slingshot. No, it, that's not a slingshot. Of course it is. I used to make slingshots with sticks and rubber bands. This kind of slingshot is sometimes called a shepherd's sling. 
Oh, you're talking about David and Goliath. Spoiler alert! Today's Bible story is about David and Goliath. I've always wondered how David can knock out a giant with one stone. Well, check this out. Some ancient armies had slingers who could shoot stones over 60 miles an hour up to 400 meters. They were sometimes faster and more deadly than arrows. I'm sorry, I misjudged you, slingshot bow. Don't feel bad, don't feel bad. Oh, and get this. Sometimes the slingers would write insults on their stones before shooting them. Archaeologists have dug up stones that read, take this, victory, catch, oh, and wait for it, ouch. Oh, for reals? I did not make that up. So how does this thing work? This is the cradle, and these are the retention cords. The sling acts as an extension of your arm. And when you place a stone in, and spin it, the sling multiplies the force of your throw. We gotta try this out. Let's, Let's do it. it. Okay, you see that target? Yeah. Can you see through the gun? I can see. Okay, one of us is gonna hit that target. None of us are leaving here until one of us hits that target. We're gonna be here for a while. I'm gonna hit it. She's not gonna hit it. Okay, don't try this at home. We're in a professional story lab. True. Okay, first, you're gonna take your index finger and you're gonna put it through the loop. Okay, I got it. Got it? Okay. Then, you're gonna grab on to this retention cord. Okay. Make sure you hold on tight. Then, you're gonna place your stone in and then you're gonna swing with a bunch of momentum from an underhand arc. All right. Once enough momentum is built, you're gonna release the retention cord. All right. Okay, ready? Yeah. Hey, that was pretty close. You hey, let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna try the figure eight. Or not. Way harder than it looks. I mean, David had all day, every day to practice in the fields. Which reminds me, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the ninth book of the Old Testament, 1 Samuel. God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. God delivered them from slavery and led them through the desert to freedom in the land of Canaan. But the Israelites were like a yo-yo. They'd run to God and turn away from God. Run to God, turn away from God. Instead of trusting God to lead them, they begged for a king like the nations around them. And God gave them a king, Saul. But Saul turned his back on what God wanted too. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, Erica. Hey, everyone. At this time, one of the ways God spoke to the people was through a priest. The high priest Samuel had loved and listened to God since he was a young boy. And he was deeply saddened when he saw that King Saul was ignoring God. But God spoke to Samuel. I am sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. So Samuel was in a tricky position. Saul could have Samuel killed for anointing a new king, but Samuel chose to be brave and do exactly as God had told him. Samuel traveled to Bethlehem where Jesse lived with his sons. The first son, Eliab, was tall and handsome and definitely looked like king material. And Samuel thought to himself, Oh, this has to be the one the Lord wants me to anoint for him. But God had something super important to say to Samuel. Do not consider how handsome or tall he is. I have not chosen him. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what's in his heart. Jesse had six other sons stand right in front of Samuel, but even though they looked pretty kingly, God made it clear to Samuel. Hmm. Well, God hasn't chosen them either. Are these the only sons you have? Well, my, uh, my youngest son is taking care of the sheep. Well, well okay, uh, send for him. So, of course, Jesse sent for his youngest son, David. And when David showed up, well, <laughs> he looked and smelled like he'd been hanging out with, well, a bunch of sheep. But God was looking at David's heart instead of his haircut. He told Samuel, Get up and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel poured oil on David's head, a special sign that God had chosen him to be the next king of Israel. 
Okay, now, just to be clear, David was not king yet. In fact, Saul didn't even know there was a new king waiting in the wings. He was busy leading the nation, and later trying to fight off a Philistine invasion. And the Philistines had a secret weapon. A warrior, more than nine feet tall, named Goliath. Choose one of your men. Have him come face me to decide this war. Obviously, the Israelites were terrified! For 40 days in a row, they cowered behind the battle line as Goliath repeated his dare. Now, David's brothers were part of Saul's army. And after all this time, their dad wanted to make sure they were okay. So, Jesse told David to leave the sheep behind and take some food to his brothers. David arrived just in time to hear Goliath's challenge. Come and fight me! I dare you! Right away, David turned the men around him. He's bringing shame on Israel and trash-talking God! Someone has to fight him! Word got back to King Saul that this kid was asking about Goliath. So Saul sent for David. Don't let anyone lose hope because of this Philistine. I'll go out and fight him. You're too young. When I'm taking care of my father's sheep, sometimes a wild animal attacks. I go after it to save the sheep. I've killed a lion and a bear. God saved me from them, and he'll save me from this Philistine. Go. May the Lord be with you. At first, Saul wanted David to wear his own armor. <sighs> but it was super heavy, and David wasn't used to it. So David shrugged it off and went and found five smooth stones from the stream instead. Come and fight me! This time, when Goliath made his challenge, David stepped forward. The warrior mocked him. <laughs> Come over here. I'll feed you to the wild animals. <laughs> You come against me with a sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. He'll give me victory over you. As Goliath moved to attack, David raced forward. He took one of those stones, fit it in his sling, and spun it with all his might. The stone <coughs> sliced through the air and hit Goliath squirrely on the head. Ow. The giant swayed and fell to the ground, dead. When the Philistines saw their hero was dead, they panicked and ran. The Israelites chased them until their whole army scattered. And Saul was so impressed with David, he invited him to come and live at the palace. The end. That story gives me the chills, no matter how many times I hear it. I mean, how did David have the guts to do that? Well, David had gotten in the habit of talking to God every day and asking for God's help to protect the sheep. So when he came up against something that seemed impossible, he had practice. He was ready. So what's our part in the story? Now, I don't think any of us will meet a nine-foot-tall giant soon, but you probably are going to face something that feels big and impossible. Maybe someone you know is sick. You're super nervous about visiting them, but you can encourage them and show them God's love, even when things feel dark. Or maybe your giant is PE. I have a friend who hates running. She was gonna pretend to be sick on the day she had to run a mile in PE. What happened? Well, we talked to God about it together, and she got out there and ran. Wow. Yep. You don't have to do the impossible alone. Jesus went up against the biggest, scariest thing of all, death, and he defeated it. God raised Jesus from the dead, and when we believe in Jesus, we get to face our fears with the very same power that raised Jesus back to life. All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. You can do what you should, even when things seem impossible. Like actually trying to hit the target with this thing. We looked a little weird. Yes, we did. Wanna try again? Absolutely. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.
All right, friends, thanks for joining us today. We cannot wait to see you right back here next week for another Bible story and some more worship. We'll see you soon.